Christopher Schmidt, an assistant professor of anthropology and biology in the College of Arts and Sciences. The presentation is Reducing Coding Anxiety Through Self-Assessment and Drag Queens on Grading CAS ANBI 588. Sorry, muted, thank you. <laughs> um, so we can go to the next slide right now. Um, so I thought I would give a case study of um, one example of ungrading a course to kind of illustrate some of the ideas that the other presenters have expressed so eloquently today. And in this case, it's a unique class because um, I am in the anthropology department. Um, I'm also affiliated faculty in women's gender and sexuality studies. And um, as a biological anthropologist, I'm often teaching STEM like, well, STEM courses to folks who maybe have never run across them before. And so um, in a lot of cases, I'm teaching students who are very reluctant and very afraid of STEM like courses. Um, and on top of that, even my, my STEM like students really get a lot of anxiety around coding. Now, this class in particular tries to teach biostatistics using R-based coding methods. And for those of us who use R, if you're familiar with this, it has a very, very steep learning curve. Um, and I thought when I first developed this course that it would be, you know, a typical course. I would kind of teach them by doing. It was active learning. Um, students can use their own data sets. And I thought this would be a, an amazing way to kind of usher the students into using R. And in the original conception of this course, there were uh, coding quizzes and tests. It was very, very traditional. Next, please. Um, however, <laughs> it did not turn out that way. Um, my students freaked out. Um, they were so concerned about their struggles with coding, how difficult it was, how unfamiliar it was, that um, they really, really hated it. They were overly anxious. Exams were a disaster. And the worst part is that after the course was over, most of those students decided not to use R. In fact, they went back to kind of boutique package coding courses like SAS, which to me felt like a huge failure. Next, please. So I really thought about what I was trying to have the students get out of those courses. And really what I wanted was for them to learn how to appreciate coding, to kind of take those first steps and to really figure out a way to feel like coding was something they could do that was meaningful for their future work. So I took into all of these course modifications that I got primarily from the ungrading literature in writing courses, actually. Um, so this kind of interdisciplinarity of ungrading, I think is a really crucial aspect of it. And all of these efforts really led to a case where students um, felt like they owned the course. Um, next, please. And so this emphasis on peer and self-assessment, flexible deadlines, pacing was student-directed in this way. Um, they really helped, helped them to learn why something failed and ask for help rather than being assessed on their failure, which led to them actually really enjoying the process of learning. And they learned how to find access and leverage resources rather than memorizing them, which to me felt like a much better way to approach coding. Um, but the most successful aspect of the course was the ungrading of it. Next, please. So um, the capstone of the course was a self-assessment assignment in which students construct a web page that is kind of like a portfolio of all the work that they did during the course. And in it, I guide them through a series of questions that are meant to help them self-assess skill attainment over the entire breadth of the course. So students had to go back and look at their first coding assignments, which they all felt very embarrassed about, um, and compare them to what they had managed to accomplish at the end of the course. And at the end of that process, I asked them to self-assess a letter grade for themselves. And the way that I presented is that if I disagree with their self-assessed grades, we'll have a conversation, we'll talk our way through it, um, and we maybe will come to an agreement on a different grade from the one that they self-assessed. However, for the most part, that wasn't necessary. And I know, um, you know, Marie and everybody actually has been talking about trusting students with this self-assessment process. And for those of you who think students are just gonna be like this queen here and say like, I'm the best, give me an A, that's not what happens. Of the 32 students that I've tried this with, only five grades needed discussion and three of them actually had to be increased. And all of these were students of color or international students. So I bring up this point in, 
Um, partially because I do think that what's been brought up before that students of color feel disadvantaged and are being disadvantaged by traditional grading, this actually is kind of seeped into their own assessments of their performance. And I think this is something that we need to keep in mind when we do ungrade, because um, we can trust our students, but we can't trust the system that has led to them assessing themselves. Um, incidentally, um, a lot of these grades, uh, among these grades, this included C's and D's in self-assessment that were actually appropriately assessed. So just in case people are worried that ungrading and relying on self-assessment will lead to students inflating their own grades, this has definitely not been my experience. So um, I think that this has been like a really kind of amazing way to actually get students to get out of the class what I wanted them to get. And the best indication of this is I ran into a student who took this course three years ago and he's like, I still use your modules. I'm still coding in R and I love it. And I was like, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. And so I'm also gathering qualitative evidence from these self-assessments to make sure that this is actually doing what I think it does within these classes. Uh, next, please. And so um, if you wanna take a look at how I've implemented this, all of it is on the course website, which is actually the syllabus. So please take a look. And um, of course, I'm happy to answer questions later. So thank you.